Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Healthcare Settings, The Places Where Care is Delivered. This is Lecture A. The component, The Culture of Healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, the organization of patient care within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for this unit, Healthcare Settings, The Places Where Care is Delivered, are to Differentiate the range of care delivery organizations, including primary care, specialty care, tertiary care, hospitals, clinics, the medical home, home health, hospice, and long-term care facilities. Analyze the organization of health care delivery from the perspective of a continuum of care, including outpatient services, inpatient services, home care services, long-term care, and end-of-life care. Evaluate the similarities and differences of community hospitals, teaching hospitals, specialty hospitals, and community health clinics. Additional objectives for this unit are to describe the various departments and services offered by an outpatient clinic, community hospital, academic medical center, and long-term care facility. Explain the ways in which different outpatient and inpatient departments interact and how their services relate. Describe ways data and information are created and used by people in different outpatient and inpatient departments. Describe ways in which medical and information technology have improved interdepartmental communication and consequently the patient experience. This lecture examines the various aspects of health care provider organizations, the type of care settings or organizations, the level of care provided by these organizations, and the role they serve in the patient continuum of care. Quote, the patient continuum of care is a concept involving an integrated system of care that guides and tracks the patient over time through a comprehensive array of health services spanning all levels of care intensity. End quote. One goal of the continuum of care concept is to provide a framework for delivery of optimum health care to patient populations across all provider care facilities. The continuum of care can be described as the array of care services provided from birth to end of life. All health care provider organizations, hospitals, physician clinics, outpatient clinics, home health providers, hospice services, the medical home, and more, participate in the patient continuum of care. Throughout this presentation, the unique functions of various health care organizations are highlighted. The presentation also provides examples of relationships between health care organizations. The best way to get a broad picture of the types of care delivery organizations is to look at the range of services that they provide. Primary care organizations are usually the entry point for health care services. Secondary care is most often specialty care. Tertiary care organizations offer diagnostic and treatment options that are not available at most health care organizations. The graphic shows that primary care organizations may refer patients to either secondary care or tertiary care, indicated by an arrow from the primary care organization text box to both the secondary care and tertiary care text boxes. Secondary care organizations also may refer directly to tertiary care organizations, indicated by an arrow from the secondary care organization text box to the tertiary care organization text box. This quote describes how primary care addresses the majority of personal health care needs. It is ideally easily accessible and sustained. It is often the entry point into health care and includes screening, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment for acute and chronic health problems. Physician practices and physician clinics are the most common types of primary care organizations. Primary care services are also provided through public health clinics and community health clinics for some patient populations. Secondary care organizations represent more specialized care and are also called specialty care organizations. They can provide many types of specialty care, such as surgery, cardiology, physical medicine, and burn care. Examples of the wide range of organizations considered secondary care providers include ambulatory care facilities, such as outpatient surgery centers, and other freestanding ambulatory facilities or rehabilitative facilities, community hospitals and academic hospitals, specialty hospitals, such as cancer-focused hospitals, home care and hospice services, extended care facilities, such as nursing homes and skilled nursing facilities. Tertiary care centers provide care that is not available at other health care organizations. 
In many cases, a new procedure is perfected in only a few organizations, and that is the only place the procedure can be obtained. Examples include complex facial reconstruction, many types of organ transplants, or specialized burn care. This quote also makes a point that bears repeating. Many organizations provide multiple levels of care. Large integrated delivery systems or academic hospital systems are sometimes referred to as tertiary care centers because of the highly skilled patient care services they provide and the highly skilled clinicians and physicians who practice in such hospitals. Many organizations seek to provide a broad range of patient care services by developing an integrated health care delivery network or system. An integrated network can be as simple as an informal association between primary care providers with local hospitals or medical centers. A more common approach is to establish a formal organization in which primary, secondary, and tertiary care services are managed by a single organization supporting their community and other targeted geographic locations. These services can be provided in a central location or the facilities can span across a specific geographic location which could include nationwide and even international locations. As previously discussed, the patient continuum of care concept involves numerous types of health care provider organizations that participate in providing the required patient services. The patient's medical condition directs the specific type of providers and medical services required at any point in time with the main goal of returning the patient to the usual function of daily living or until services are no longer required. This concept has also been described as care from birth to death. As an example, consider the continuum of care involved for a patient who sustains severe injuries in a motor vehicle accident. Numerous services are required, from emergency care to stabilize the patient, to surgery to repair the injuries, to rehabilitation to return the patient to normal function. If an integrated health care delivery network is accessible, the patient may be able to minimize the number of provider organizations involved in her care. For example, a network may offer orthopedic surgery as well as inpatient and ambulatory postoperative rehabilitative services, whereas other hospitals may not have ambulatory rehabilitative services and the patient would have to seek out a separate provider to obtain these services. Two very good definitions of the patient care continuum can be found at the links on this slide. Ambulatory services, also known as outpatient care, are provided to non-hospitalized patients. A wide range of services are offered by ambulatory care providers, including primary care, which is often provided in a doctor's office or a clinic. Specialty medicine services are also provided in ambulatory settings. Examples of various types of services provided through an ambulatory care organization include the following, outpatient surgery, sports medicine, sleep diagnostic laboratories, physical and occupational rehabilitative services, laboratory services, and radiology services, including magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, and computerized tomography. Some organizations have set up wellness centers that provide prevention, education, and wellness patient services. Recently, the industry has seen the emergence of retail clinics that provide basic patient care, flu immunizations, and non-emergency care services on-site at retail stores. Examples are clinics located in pharmacy chains and other retail stores. These can be owned and operated by the retail chain, or the services can be provided through a collaboration between the retail store and the local health care system. Additionally, many public health service offerings through the state and at the local level may provide services through their clinics. The patient medical home model is a primary care approach to patient-centered, comprehensive, team-based, coordinated, and accessible care, quote, Focused on quality and safety, it has become a widely accepted model for how primary care should be organized and delivered throughout the healthcare system and encourages providers and care teams to meet patients where they are. The medical home is not a final destination. Instead, it is a model for achieving primary care excellence so that care is received in the right place, at the right time, and in the manner that best suits a patient's needs. End quote. Benefits of this model include improved patient care quality and safety, as well as a tight integration of the patient and family with the providers and care activities and decisions. Most medical treatments are designed for the average patient as a one-size-fits-all approach. This approach is, quote, successful for some patients but not for others. 
Precision medicine, sometimes known as personalized medicine, is an innovative approach to disease prevention and treatment that takes into account differences in people's genes, environments, and lifestyles. End quote. Quote, Advances in precision medicine have already led to powerful new discoveries and several new FDA-approved treatments that are tailored to specific characteristics of individuals, such as a person's genetic makeup or the genetic profile of an individual's tumor, end quote. For example, quote, patients with a variety of cancers routinely undergo molecular testing as part of patient care, enabling physicians to select treatments that improve chances of survival and reduce exposure to adverse effects, end quote. Community health clinics are community-based health centers providing care to underserved populations. Federally qualified health centers, or FQHCs, must meet specific qualifications to receive federal funding. They include community health centers, migrant health centers, health care for the homeless programs, and public health primary care programs. Lookalike health clinics do not receive the same grant funding, but do receive many of the same benefits as FQHCs. Lookalikes must be certified as meeting the definition of a health center. Those operated by tribal organizations usually receive funding from the Indian Health Services. In addition, many community health centers are owned and operated by nonprofit organizations as well as by community and city health departments. School based health centers are located in schools and offer a wide range of services depending on state and local policy. They often provide screening, preventive care, and limited acute care, such as treatment of minor injuries or colds. Some may offer behavioral and other forms of counseling. They often have either formal or informal relationships with local health care organizations for referrals when patients need additional or specialized care. Employer-based health clinics have expanded their roles in the last few decades. The original focus was on occupational health and injury prevention. These clinics have expanded into preventive care, screening, wellness, and chronic disease management. They may be located in an office at the employer's facility or have a mobile clinic that can serve several facilities. For the employer, these clinics have the advantage of providing control over health care cost. It allows patients to receive health care without taking time off. Employers are anticipated to continue to provide clinics to their employees to assist in overall cost reduction and increased productivity. From a recent survey, worksite clinics are offered at 29% of organizations with more than 5,000 employees in 2015, which was up from 24% in 2013. Inpatient care is health care that requires admission to a hospital for more than 24 hours. Quote, hospital services is a term that refers to medical and surgical services and the supporting laboratories, equipment, and personnel that make up the medical and surgical mission of a hospital or hospital system. End quote. This slide provides examples of hospital services. There are two general types of hospitals. Community hospitals are non-federally funded hospitals, but may be nonprofit or for-profit. They consist of local hospitals that provide short-term general care, but may also include specialty hospitals that focus on obstetrics, gynecology, orthopedics, or rehabilitation. Teaching hospitals are usually associated with a university or medical school. Also termed academic hospitals, they have a major role in training health professionals. The range of clinical care provided by community and teaching hospitals may be the same. There are also hospitals that focus solely on a specific population or disease state. These hospitals may be part of a larger integrated delivery network or have a working relationship with the larger provider. However, they may be owned and operated as an independent organization that is for-profit or non-profit. Most U.S. hospitals are privately funded community hospitals that offer acute care and are not affiliated with the federal, state, or local governments. The United States also has a substantial number of psychiatric hospitals and hospitals that are funded by the federal government. For patients who must stay in a hospital for more than 25 days, long-term care hospitals and facilities can accommodate their needs. Long-term care facilities are health care organizations that provide assistance to aging adults and to clients with chronic illness. A variety of types of institutions serve different needs. Adult day care provides meals and activities during the day. 
independent living situations are retirement communities that generally have separate condos or apartments. Residents can typically purchase options, such as meals and housekeeping services, individually. Assisted living can be an apartment or individual room where a number of services, such as personal care, medication administration, meals, and housekeeping are part of the package. Skilled nursing facilities provide full medical care. They also provide assistance with activities of daily living, such as meals, personal care, housekeeping, and laundry. Long-term care hospitals are a special category in which the facility manages the transition from acute illness or injury to return to home. Many community hospitals have long-term care units that serve that purpose. The average patient's stay in long-term care units or hospitals is greater than 25 days. Home health care provides a wide range of services in the patient's home for an illness or injury. Home care is usually less expensive, more convenient, and may be an effective care alternative. The goal of home care is to treat the illness or injury and assist the patient in becoming self-sufficient as soon as possible. Examples of home health services include wound care for pressure sores or a surgical wound, patient and caregiver education, intravenous and nutrition therapy, medication administration and injections, monitoring serious illness and unstable health status, and physical and rehabilitation therapy. Hospice is the model for quality, compassionate care for people facing a life-limiting illness or injury. Hospice care involves a team-oriented approach to expert medical care, pain management, and emotional and spiritual support expressly tailored to the patient's needs and wishes. Support is provided to the patient's loved ones as well. At the center of hospice and palliative care is the belief that each of us has the right to die pain-free and with dignity, and that our families will receive the necessary support to allow us to do so. Hospice services can be obtained through a variety of provider settings, including hospitals, ambulatory settings, or in the patient's home. There are three main federally funded healthcare institutions in the United States, the Veterans Health Administration, Military Health System, and the Indian Health Service. The Veterans Health Administration, or VA, is the largest integrated health system in the United States, consisting of 153 medical centers and 1,400 community-based outpatient facilities. The VA also includes community living centers, vet centers for outreach, and domiciliaries to care for patients with long-term medical conditions in a home-like atmosphere. As with any integrated health system, the VA provides primary, secondary, and tertiary care. The military health system is part of the U.S. Department of Defense. It provides services to service members, retirees, and their families. Each branch of the armed forces has its own network of hospitals and health care facilities. TRICARE is a health care program that ensures care worldwide. This includes military facilities and is supplemented by civilian health care providers, organizations, and pharmacies. The Indian Health Service is an agency that is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It provides health care to American Indians and Alaskan Natives. The main goals are to provide access to care and to reduce health disparities. The Indian Health Service consists of a federal system and health care organizations managed independently by American Indian tribes and Alaska Native corporations. Additional services are provided by contract with private providers. The federal system is divided into 12 physical areas of the United States. Each area has a unique group of tribes that work with the system on a day-to-day -day basis. Services are provided through 28 hospitals, 63 health centers, 31 health stations, and 34 urban projects. American Indian tribes and Alaska Native corporations administer 17 additional hospitals, 263 health centers, 92 health stations, and 166 Alaska Village clinics. Like most systems, the Indian Health Service offers primary and secondary care. Some areas have tertiary care capabilities or contract with private providers for these services. This concludes Lecture A of Healthcare Settings, the places where care is delivered. This lecture discussed the range of healthcare organizations, including those that provided primary care, secondary care, and tertiary care. The lecture defined the types of services that are provided in the continuum of care, the care a patient receives 
from entry into the system until care is no longer needed. This lecture also described some of the unique healthcare organizations and the relationships between them.